Hello, I'm Casey Westerman, the Agnes Scott College Archivist, and this is a short illustrated presentation about the history of Founders Day, Parents Weekend, and the Sophomore Ring Ceremony. The observance of George Washington Scott's birthday, February 22nd, as Founders Day, was first announced by President Gaines early in the session of 1918. From that date until 1956, Founders Day was designated as a holiday on the college calendar. Initially, for some years, there would be a festive dinner on campus for which students, especially the seniors, would dress in costumes from George Washington's era. After dinner, all would adjourn to the gymnasium where a special group would dance the minuet, followed by general community dancing until a reasonable hour. Here is video recorded in 1932 of the students dressed as George Washington and his compatriots uh, dancing the minuet. In time, groups of alumni in various cities began to have meetings on or around February 22nd. For many years, an Agnes Scott Founders Day radio broadcast originated in Atlanta on which President McCain would speak about the college followed by Dean Hopkins' message to alumni. During the years of World War II, the annual broadcast was abandoned, but in 1945, the campus aspects of the celebration were resumed. As the college moved into the 1950s, the students became less and less interested in the purpose of Founders Day, except as a holiday, so much so that President Alston and his associates decided to discontinue the holiday and rather to emphasize George Washington Scott's birthday by other means. Here are a few photographs of the students dressed in colonial costumes. Here uh, is a couple of students shown with President McCain in 1933. After 1957, uh, Founders Day took on its current form. It's an annual convocation with one or more guest speakers. There's no record of any uh, special Founders Day observance on campus in 1960, but beginning in 1961 and continuing to the present, an annual college convocation has marked the special occasion. This convocation from the start has featured a distinguished speaker. Since 1961, the guest speakers have included deans and presidents of other colleges, Agnes Scott College professors, current students and alumni, and in 1972, Dean Rusk, the Georgia native who served as Secretary of State under Presidents Kennedy and Johnson. Beginning in 1958, uh, Parents Weekend occurred usually concurrently with the uh, Founders Day celebration. Agnes Scott's first sophomore Parents Weekend was on February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, 1958. From that time since, the event has been an annual event on the college calendar. After a careful assessment of Agnes Scott's needs and after checking into parents' programs at other colleges, a faculty committee in 1957 recommended that Agnes Scott inaugurate a special weekend for the parents of sophomores. The sophomores were chosen because the seniors already had investiture, the juniors had junior jaunt, and the freshmen, because of their newness, were receiving special attention in a number of ways. The sophomores needed occasion, which was uniquely theirs. The winter quarter was recommended as the time because during that period, students, particularly sophomores, needed a shot in the arm. The recommendation of this committee was adopted and the president immediately asked this committee to become the steering group for the first sophomore parents weekend. Since 1958, the program has been in a constant state of evolution. In the early years, parents would attend classes with their daughters and other events, such as a luncheon for parents and other activities put on by class members. The weekend also underwent a name change from Sophomore Parents Weekend to Sophomore Family Weekend in 1990. More recently, the weekend has consisted of the Founders Day Convocation on Friday afternoon and the Sophomore Ring Ceremony on Saturday evening. Class rings have been a part of Ag Agnes Scott College tradition since the early 20th century, with the earliest ring in special collections dating back to 1919. These early rings, however, are markedly different from the black onyx Agnes Scott College students recognize today. These were simple gold signet rings with the seal of the college and the year of the student. In 1934, the design was radically changed. 
The black onyx stone was added to the design with the graduating year engraved on one side and BA or AB at the time was engraved on the other. The class of 1935 was the first class to receive the new ring design. Other small changes have been made, usually at the discretion of each class. One notable change is that the rings are now also available in silver as they were originally only in gold. The rings were not always given as they are now during a student's sophomore year. When the tradition began, the senior class received their rings in the fall of their senior year. By 1954, the timing had changed to a student's junior year, and by 1965, it had changed to the spring of a student's sophomore year. Compared to the long history of the Agnes Scott ring, the formal ring ceremony is a recent addition. Before 1989, students would go to an office and pick up their ring after getting their name checked off to make sure they'd paid. The first ring ceremony was started by an alumna and the Associate Dean of Students, Karen Green, class of 86. The importance of the ring to the alumni community was apparent and she felt that the tradition needed more recognition. The first ceremony was in 1989 for the class of 1991. The ceremony was held in the Rebecca Waltz reception room for the first two years. The ceremony was then moved into Gaines Chapel. An alumni speaker was added to the program soon after the move. The ring ceremony has usually, though not always, occurred during sophomore family weekend. The sources for this presentation were Walter Edward McNair's book, Lest We Forget, published in 1983 by Agnes Scott College, and A List of Traditions and Their History by Marianne Bradley, the former archivist of the college. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd welcome them. Uh, please feel free to email me at archives at agnescott.edu. Thank you.